On the 2nd of May 2023, 605 days after posting my first ever YouTube video, my first YouTube channel reached 100,000 subscribers. Back when this was still a far-fetched dream for me, younger me made up all sorts of situations of what this would feel like. I thought that it would solve all of my problems. I thought that I would be the coolest guy at every single social gathering. But the actual reaction I had when I hit 100,000 subscribers was, oh, that's nice. Getting to the goal is always going to be underwhelming because you already know you're going to get there weeks in advance. And by the time you reach your current goal, you're already going to have your eyes on the next goal. So be aware of that. But I did learn a lot of lessons along the way and I'm going to share all of those with you today. First lesson, however long you think it's gonna take, double it. When I first started making YouTube videos, my first YouTube video was a weight loss transformation. I had just lost about 20 kilos or about 40, 50 pounds. So I was quite proud of myself. So I decided to make a little montage of that and make that my first video. And I don't know what I expected when I released it, but I expected more than like eight views overnight. I had looked at all the body transformations that I watched that had like two million views, three million views, and mine I didn't think was much worse than the other one. So I thought surely I'd get at least a couple thousand, right? And the same thing happened with all of the later videos I posted. The first three or four months of my YouTube, I didn't gain a single subscriber that wasn't my family. And at the time, I thought that every video I released actually deserved views, when really it didn't. It wasn't until I rewatched all of those videos two years later that I really realize just how bad they actually were. When you first start YouTube, you're almost going to be blind to what makes a good video. And there's no real way to get better at this, except just getting better at everything and making more videos. Because two years down the line, you're going to look back at those first videos that you made and realize everything that's wrong with them. But that's okay, because everything comes with experience. And every YouTuber that you're watching right now had that period where they sucked at first as well. So it's not just you, don't worry. Just slowly improve everything you can and you will eventually start getting views. A significant portion of the YouTube experience is working first for about five or six months minimum before you start getting any views at all. And it's at that stage that you just need belief. You need to keep reminding yourself, if that person can do it, why can't I? You're no different to everyone else that's made it. For me, it took me six months to get to 20 subscribers then another three months to get to 2,000, and another three months after that to get to 60,000. Once the results start coming, it's exponential. But if you don't keep yourself grounded and remind yourself of why you're doing this, those first six months are going to be hell. You're gonna start eventually getting views, but you need to get better at all the YouTube skills. You're making a lot of progress right now, even if you don't see it. And remember, all the results come like this. There's a certain level, like standard, you have to reach on YouTube before you start getting views. And that can take anywhere between six months and a year to get to. So don't lose your belief, just keep going, keep improving and don't quit. That's all you need. My second lesson is that subscribers aren't equal. You need to decide why you're doing YouTube in the first place. High predated videos like the ones that I made on my first channel are going to attract a younger audience. And you might want this or you might not. That's up to you. At the time, I just enjoyed making those videos and that's the type of audience I attracted. I didn't really care who I attracted as long as I attracted someone. So I have no regrets about attracting that type of audience to my first channel. That's just what came to me from the videos I enjoyed making. But if your goal is just to make money, don't optimize for subscribers. There's people out there with 10,000 subscribers that make more money than someone with 2 million subscribers. On your YouTube analytics page, one subscriber looks like one subscriber, but in real life, that's not really how it works. Because one subscriber could be a five-year-old Timmy that subscribed to you watching videos from his mum's phone, or it could be a young successful businessman. There's this phrase that a lot of people say, and it's likes ain't cash. And if you can learn this lesson now, please do because a lot of lessons have to be learned the hard way unfortunately especially in youtube and business but if there's one thing that you're going to take away from this video make it this if you're attracting the right type of audience you need a lot less subscribers than you think to start making some good money from youtube and start going full time there's this youtuber called harbinator and he used to be an editor for a really big self-improvement youtuber called hamza harbinator has his own youtube channel now and he makes youtube videos on there every day and those videos get anywhere between 
500 to 1,000 views. But Harbinator's audience isn't made up of children watching videos on their mum's phone. It's young people that want to break free from a 9 to 5 and live a free life. The way he initially made his money is editing for the big YouTuber, and now he's just released his own video editing course where he teaches people how to video edit well and how to get high paying clients. And that makes him enough money to live a comfortable life here in Koh Samui, Thailand, where I'm living right now. So especially if you're an educational creator, lower your bar, you might need less subscribers than you think you need. An audience of people who actually like you and who can sit through a 10 minute video of you just talking are way more valuable than a child who needs a cut every two seconds to stay engaged. And I'm sorry to say this, but that child does not give a shit about you. This is a 10 minute, barely edited talking head video. You're watching this right now because because you've found my advice useful in the past and you like me, you're invested in me. My goal with this channel is to build a subscriber base that I can actually meet in real life and actually connect with. And unfortunately, entertainment content just gets you far less of those die-hard type fans. And of course, that's not to say that I'm ungrateful for all those subscribers on my other channel. I am very grateful for them because they've allowed me to get to where I am today. It's just something to keep in mind for you when you're making your videos. When you're making the video, editing it, making a thumbnail, thinking of the title, think of not just what's going to get views, but what type of audience is that going to attract to your channel? Because sometimes less views aren't necessarily a bad thing if those views are coming from the right people. Third thing is to do what you really want to do right from the start. Typically, after one of your videos blows up, making videos on similar topics and of a similar style will get you more views on your channel. But if that topic is something you don't enjoy, or if you don't enjoy making that type of video repeatedly, you can fall into the trap of becoming becoming a slave to the algorithm and making YouTube a second job, where a job is exactly what we want to avoid. So consider taking longer to grow, but doing what you really want, because the YouTube algorithm will pull you in directions that get more views. I always wanted to have a channel like this, a personal brand where I just talk about my lessons, stuff I've learned along my journey. And that's actually how my first channel started. I started making fitness videos, videos about my degree, anything that I wanted to make a video on. But I eventually pivoted away from that because I thought that that content wasn't getting any views and I thought that it would never get views. After trying a bunch of stuff, I eventually went viral doing game development and I have no regrets for that because I still enjoy doing game development. But if I had a choice to have 100,000 subscribers on a personal brand self-improvement type channel like I'm doing now and that other channel, I would pick the first one any day. So my advice is to avoid switching. Just pick what you really want to do from the start and just do that until you start getting views with it. You will eventually build up the skills to get views on that thing that you really want to do. It might take longer, but trust me, it's worth it. Even if you're in pain right now and you really need to start making money because you hate your job. Because eventually, it might be a year, it might be two years, you will eventually go back to the original thing that you actually wanted to do. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Thankfully, I do enjoy game development, which is what the first channel is about. But there are YouTubers out there that have been slaves to the algorithm for years. They only make videos that they know will get views and they're terrified of trying new things because they've been trapped by the type of audience that they've built by chasing viral content. The typical advice is to make the same type of videos after one blows up, but be careful because that can trap you into making another nine to five for yourself. The actual process of succeeding on YouTube is simple. All you need to do is pick a topic, anything you want. Post videos consistently, especially at first. At first, it's good to stick to a schedule because you haven't invested yourself enough into it yet. So it's good to build up that habit. Eventually, I pivoted away from that because I knew I wouldn't quit YouTube. So I wanted to put as much effort as I could into the video so that they're as good as possible, which means I didn't have a set upload schedule. But for you, if you're starting out, it's good to have one. Then just constantly go back through your past content and look what you could improve. Every week, improve something about your content and then never quit. That's it. But the never quit part is the hard part because succeeding on YouTube is very difficult, especially in the first stages. It will be one of the biggest mental challenges that you ever take on. Every day is gonna be different. One day, one of the videos is gonna pop off and you're gonna be really happy and then, the next day, you're gonna be back to being upset. <laughs> you have to try to detach from the analytics as best as you can. And as cliche as this sounds, just 
Trust the process. If you keep making content and keep improving it, it's unreasonable that you won't get to your goal. But it is very difficult. Every day you're going to have doubts about yourself and every day you're gonna have to remind yourself of why you're doing this. You're gonna be tempted to take the easy way out, but don't. This is the test. The universe is asking and testing you to see if you really want this. And once you've made enough sacrifices, you've gone through the trials, you've built up all the skills, the views will come, but it's gonna take a lot of time. Do this exercise for me. Go on socialblade.com and then just search up one of your favorite YouTube channels. Then click on the detailed statistics section and scroll down. Sometimes the data is a bit messed up and it won't show you the earliest data. It's messed up for my first channel, but hopefully for the YouTuber that you went on, it'll all be on there. And then just look at their total view and subscriber count across the months, especially when they first started. You'll find that a lot of your favorite YouTubers took like at least a year, year and a half to start getting serious views. That should put it in perspective for you. And all those people did is when they felt like quitting, they didn't. And they just kept building up their skills building up their skills, getting as good as possible at what they're doing until eventually they reach the tipping point and their channel exploded. That's why not that many people get to be YouTubers. It's not because it's luck. It's because it takes years of hard, concentrated effort. It takes years of feeling pain and getting better despite feeling that pain. That's why they make it, not because they got lucky. And the same will happen with you if you don't quit. Remember, a lot of the YouTubers that you watch took years to get to where they are now. So you can't per perfectly emulate the quality of their content. Go on their channel videos and sort them by old and see where they started. You might even find that your first video is much better than their first video. So persevere, don't quit because it will be extremely painful, but the rewards are worth it because on the other side is a life of freedom. A life that you've built for yourself, making money from what you want to do. Once you reach that goal, you're going to wonder why the rest of the population hasn't done it yet. But be careful, don't become a slave to the algorithm. Don't fall into the traps because you might just build another nine to five for yourself. And we want to avoid that. If you've watched this far, congratulations. You have a better attention span than 99% of the population, which already gives you a massive advantage over everyone else that wants to be a YouTuber. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm Brian and this isn't a typical YouTube channel. We are a group of people who are sick of having an ordinary life and want to build something better for ourselves. So if you resonate with this message, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.